Welcome to worship this All Saints Sunday at Abiding Hope Church. We're really glad that you could join us. We are in the middle of our Forward in Faith season. And as a part of that season, we're having people sharing with us about their generosity journey. We'd love for you to take a moment to hear this story from Jimmy and Kelly Land. We knew pretty quickly we found the right church just based off feedback and how people perceived us and talked to us and you know the messages that were being relayed we knew that we were in the right place. Coming every Sunday for me is really the best part of our week. To hear uh, Pastor Jay or Pastor Doug give that message it always kind of resets us for the week. It reminds us what we're here doing and and how I want my week to go and how I want to raise my son and how I want to be out in the community and maybe have a little bit more patience. It's not like talking to a pastor where you get all tense and you're afraid to talk to them. You can come as you are and be open. Family life has been very exciting to get going, seeing that blossoming. I think that's gonna be very big in the future. It's not only great for the children, but we get time as parents to just say, are we walking our child on the right path, right? Can, can you help me do this a little bit? And you don't feel like you're doing anything wrong because we're all in that room together and learning together. I'm, I'm very excited to get involved with the youth group. I would love to maybe one day go with them and be a chaperone on that summer trip. That seems like something that would be very fun. I think it's important for others to be generous to serve Abiding Hope because without the generosity, we can't continue to grow and do the things we're doing. We couldn't just open the new daycare, right, without generosity of people. If that means serving or if that means giving, whatever that means in their world, we can't do those things for the community without being generous. Being generous makes you feel good, like, like you've done something. And, you know, coming to, coming to the uh, talent show and donating to the kids and then seeing how that worked just makes you feel really good. Seeing how my son is, is growing up in the church and how we're bonding, um, just how he likes to volunteer with me and, and usher with me, you know, that's why we started. We wanted him to know um, how important church was and just watching him get excited about it and having him get baptized here and um, it's just been, it's been really nice to watch. Honestly, I just want my son to grow up here, to grow up here in a safe, loving environment and know that um, to treat people with kindness. As we consider our generosity journey, I want you to be thinking about the, about the ways in which the God's blessings that have been poured into you, how you can pour those out into the people around you. At Abiding Hope Church, we are very generous and support communities all around the world, from the Pine Ridge Reservation to India to Haiti, and we are one leading givers in many of those places. As you give your gifts to Abiding Hope, we share these with the world. So we want you to consider what your gift will look like next year and how God is growing that gift in you for all of our communities. You should have received a card already, a commitment card in the mail if you are a part of our community. We invite you to hang on to that, to pray faithfully over it and consider the ways in which God is blessing you and how that can be committed into the God's blessings in the world. Speaking of generosity, this community has had years of doing a project called Thanksgiving Baskets. We gathered in the gym, we put together boxes of food for people who are experiencing homelessness or the working poor, or people are just struggling at this time. And we've gathered those things together and we've bought all of the supplies and we put those baskets and we sent them out and it was a good thing and I'm so thankful we did that. Then something occurred to us. The money that we spend on food the Action Center, what used to be called Jeffco Action Center, can spend four times as much. So for every dollar we spend, they can buy four times as much food as we could. It began to not make sense that we should collect money and buy the food and send it out when our $20,000 that we raised could become $80,000 in the Action Center's hands. And so this year, what we've done is we've committed a $20,000 gift to the Action Center to assemble food for folks this Thanksgiving season and send it out. We're committed to that $20,000 and we want you to participate just like you have for the last many years. Your gift of $50 per basket and more is going to be stretched a long way and is going to help a lot of people in Jefferson County and beyond. So consider your gift by going to abidinghope.org give and then you'll see underneath uh, where it was supposed to go, Thanksgiving baskets, make that gift there and we'll see how God can multiply this blessing for those who need a little help right now. With that, let us begin our worship.
let us pray. O oh God, our help in ages past, our hope for years to come. With gratitude, we gather to celebrate the lives of those we name as saints. We celebrate those whose lives have steered us toward love, honor, peace, and hope. We thank you for filling them with the Spirit, which led them to live their lives with meaning, purpose, and direction. May they inspire us to do the same as we work towards fulfilling your vision of love and life for all. This we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray. God of life, and God who is with us even in death, we thank you for the gift of your son Jesus who showed us the way of death and life and rebirth and resurrection. May we live resurrected lives. In our blessings and in our woes, show us your way that we may be your people and as your people witness to the way of love and life in the world. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Today's reading is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 6. Then he looked up at his disciples and said, Blessed are you who are poor, for yours is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you who are hungry now, for you will be filled. Blessed are you who weep now, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude you revile you, and defame you on account of the Son of Man. Rejoice on that day and leap for joy, for surely your reward is great in heaven, for that is what their ancestors did for the prophets. But woe to you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. Woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who are laughing now, for you will mourn and weep. Woe to you when all speak well of you, for that is what their ancestors did to the false prophets. But I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, pray for those who abuse you. If anyone strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from anyone who takes away your coat, do not withhold even your shirt. Give to everyone who begs from you. And if anyone takes away your goods, do not ask for them again. Do to others as you would have them do to you. The Gospel of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It's All Saints Sunday, the Sunday immediately following All Saints Day, which is November 1st. And we celebrate this day, the passing of people in our lives. And whether or not we clothe ourselves in white and we think of the good things about these people, it's also a time where we really look at our own mortality. It's a time where we honor the idea that we've all punched a ticket when we were born and that none of us get out of it. That there's something about death that we have to look at on a day like today. When we think about death, we're not good at talking about this as Americans. We're very afraid of talking about it. We use all these words uh, to, to, to avoid saying the word died. We say they passed away. We say they moved on. They say, they say they're, they're, they're in heaven and looking down on us. There's, there's all of this this sense that we're a, a little embarrassed or even ashamed to admit that death is a part of who we are and what we do. But I have a secret I want to share with you. Maybe it's not so much a secret that no one knows, but it is something that it seems like a secret. The secret is this. There is a cycle in the universe that we are all participating in. And the cycle shows itself everywhere. And the cycle is that there is birth, there is life, there's fruitfulness, there is death, and then there is rebirth and life and fruitfulness and death. It's, it's a cycle in which we all live. And when we begin to lean into that cycle, and when you get, begin to look for that cycle, you'll find that cycle everywhere. Every plant here was a seed that was dropped in the soil that died so that life would come out of that. Every, every butterfly that is born out of a cocoon has gone through the cycle of birth and death and life again. Every sunrise is a reminder 
that the cycle of life, of birth, death, and life is a part of everything that we are a part of. When I look at the texts today and I see these combinations of blessings and woes, I don't see these so much as this uh, chart in which we are supposed to be working towards blessings and avoiding the woes. I think that's one of the, the constant problems that we run into with this text. And in fact, more, more often than not, we think of the woes as almost like curses, like curse upon you for being rich or curse upon you for who are laughing. That is not what is happening here. Woe is actually, uh, it's, in the Hebrew, it's a word hoy, which is a, a, a cry of lament, not a curse. And I think what Jesus is pointing us to in this text is the cycle where Jesus is saying, blessed are you who are hungry because someday you will be full. You see, the cycle is present. For you who right now are struggling, life is coming after that. Blessed are you who mourn for you will have joy. There is, there's another chapter that is coming out of the story. And then it says, woe to you who are full now, for you will be hungry. A reminder that in the moment where we're experiencing our best, to celebrate that moment, to, to engage that moment, to love that moment, because it doesn't last forever. That after life will come a season of emptiness, of, of, of pain. And so what do we take from a text like this? What do we do with the story of Jesus who is reminding us that we are constantly living in a cycle of blessings and woes, that we're constantly living in between the series of birth, life, and death, and rebirth? What, what do we do with a text like this? I think Jesus leads us towards the end of the text to then say, what does it look like to be living within this cycle? To know that when you are hungry, to give thanks for there will be a place and a time when you will be full. And when you are full, how do you use that moment? Because someday you will be hungry again. Jesus leads us at the end of the text to talk about what it looks like to live in that rhythm. And it's the life that the Christ calls us to, the life of justice and love and hope, where Jesus says, love your enemies. When you're blessed, when you're feeling woeful, pray for those who persecute you to, to, to live in such a way that, that you're not coming out of a place of harm and hurt, but instead living into the cycle and, and, and generating life out of that cycle, to be constantly moving in such a way that we're moving uh, along the path of life towards blessings and in such a way that, that life becomes abundant. To, to honor the place where we are now so that we can live the God life wherever we are, blessings or woes. Right, right down the road from here is a Buddhist shrine and there's a, a Buddhist story that's one of my favorites. Uh, I think I've said it before, if not, it, it's the story of the farmer. And uh, the, the story is simply this, that there was a farmer and uh, one day he has these horses and the horses run away. And the neighbors all come over and say, oh, what's such bad luck? And the farmer says, maybe. Well, the horses come back and they bring back two wild horses with it. And so there's more horses on the farm now. And the neighbors come over and they say, oh, what's such good luck? And the farmer says, maybe. Well, the son climbs on one of the horses to try to tame one of the wild horses. It bucks it off, breaks his leg. And the neighbors come over and say, oh, what's such bad luck? And the farmer says, maybe. And then uh, uh, the army comes through their town and recruiting the men to go off to fight a war, but they see the young man with the broken leg, and so he's not recruited into the war. So the neighbors come over and say, ah, such good luck. The farmer says, you got it. Maybe. To live in the series and cycle of things is to honor where we're at and understanding that good and bad are all part of the same part of our life together. And that how we live that life is critical then in seeing God's activity in all of these things, not God causing or creating, but the way we live in those blessings and the way we live in those woes so that we live a life of maybe. You see, I think it comes down to that we have two great lies that we ascribe to, whether we know it or not. One is that things will always get better. 
and the other is that things will always get worse. To always get better means that we think that our life is on a trajectory of success and that we are going to simply continue to move along this, uh, this pattern of success until, until we have made it. But you and I both know that life doesn't work that way. The healthiest people get sick. The, the most wealthy people struggle sometimes financially. That people who have lived blessed and holy lives can, can live with depression and anxiety and struggle with mental illness. We also see frequently that those people who have struggled deeply have been surrounded and are full of blessings. And we've seen that, that, that the things that are coming down on the downside of stuff, to, to think that things will only get worse, are, is that lie that maybe often a lot of depressed people or people with anxiety or people that struggle with that mental illness, it's the lie that they tell themselves that things are only going to get worse from here. See, the truth is, when you're in that place of woe, when you're in that dark place, that there is a blessing on the other side, that the end of the story is not over, that God has a story that brings life out of death. Obviously, it's in the Christ. We see it as Christ lived, that Christ lived just like these plants live, just like the rising of the sun, just like the turning of the season, just like we remember today on All Saints, that while we mourn and we grieve the ones that we love, Christ showed us that death is not the last story, that the other side of that is life again, resurrection, a, a turning of the page, that, that suddenly when we thought all things were over, that there is going to be new life on the other side of this. And we're called to participate in that cycle of birth, life, and death. That while we can remember our friends and all saints, we're also called to live, to remember them and the witness they gave to us and how we are now called to live our life, blessed or in woe. In Forward in Faith, I am astounded to just remember that you and I both are standing on the shoulders of, of saints who have gone before us generations of people who have faithfully proclaimed the crucified and risen Christ, who have shown us over and over what it means to live in the times of blessing and woe, and to remind ourselves that those of us who are blessed, well, we get to be the blessing, that we get to, to see those who are, 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 are woeful, who are, who are in pain, that the blessing that those people in pain are going to receive are our gifts, that we get to step forward in generosity to those people who are hungry now so that they will be filled. We get to see those who mourn now so that they will have joy. We get to be those people, that we get to be that, that story of God of bringing resurrection to those people who are experiencing something that might feel like death that we get to say to them when they're feeling like things are at their worst, we can say, maybe, but maybe there's another story. Maybe there's life on the other side of this. And maybe we're here to walk beside one another to remind ourselves that love and life win, that Christ is risen, that death is not the end, and that you and I, you and I get to proclaim that daily. May you, in this season of generosity, in this time of mourning, feel the blessings and the woe, and may you learn to live as Christ called us to live. If you'll pray with me. Lord God, you have called your servants to ventures of which we cannot see the ending, on paths as yet untrodden through perils unknown. Give us faith to go out in good courage, not knowing where we go, but only that your hand is leading us and your love supporting us. In the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen.
Now with the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, let us pray for the church, the world, and for all people according to their need. Holy God, we pray for those who hunger now. May we be a blessing to them. May we be the people called to feed them. May we be your heart, hands, and feet in the world. For those who mourn now, God, comfort them. Send your people to surround them with love and care, reminding them that love and life win, that death has lost its sting, and that Christ is alive, and surely we shall be too. God, we pray for those who've been persecuted, who are abused, who are in pain, who've been hurt and harmed by others for war. God, we pray for your peace. May it descend upon the world. May we see your spirit active and moving us towards love and justice. God, we pray for those who are full now. May they be blessings to others in need. We pray for those who laugh. We thank you for their laughter. And may their laughter encourage others so that when they mourn, they will have those friends and blessings around them. We pray for those who are blessed by the, the gifts of life May they be abundant with those gifts and generous with those in need. God, as we come to you this day, strengthen us for the journey, knowing that we are invited into death, life, and rebirth. May we be reborn in your vision and mission this day. We pray this in the name of love, whose name is Jesus. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I invite you to share a sign of peace with your neighbor. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. And again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. It's God's family. We pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. In this meal, we're reminded that we're both blessed and broken. We're both full of love and joy and hope and struggling and crying out for the world. This meal is a reminder that we live that life of blessings and woes and that we are invited into God's path that moves us towards love and justice and resurrection. So come, take and eat this meal. Receive the bread knowing the body of Christ is given for you, the blood of Christ is shed for you, and that the gifts of God are free. Bringing up from this old ground. 
Now the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen us and keep us in God's grace. Amen. As we engage the world around us, may God's love stir up life within us. May our words and actions bring restoration and peace. And may we step forward in faith toward God's vision for love and life for all people. So love God, serve God. Love all, serve all. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace in the name of the triune God. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Mm -hmm.